A short distance from New Delhi, the country's capital, this luxurious residence is preparing to host one of the most anticipated weddings of the year in the finest Indian tradition. A multicolored scene celebrating the alliance of two wealthy families of the textile industry before nearly 1,000 hand-picked guests. <laughs> The bridegroom wears the latest fashion accessory among the Indian novel riche, a necklace of banknotes to assert power and prosperity. Flashing his cash is the guest of honor's favorite activity, this young bearded millionaire, the bride's cousin. Ivan Lutra defines himself as a serial internet entrepreneur. He made a very substantial donation to the couple. Oh, oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> He's my brother and obviously, yeah, he did a lot of things. I love him a lot. <laughs> Are you proud of all that he's doing? Oh yeah, definitely. I'm so proud of him. Yeah. Very proud of him, actually. As soon as he takes a step now, he distributes envelopes. At the age of 22, Evan claims to earn nearly a million euros a month and travels two-thirds of the year out of the country. But he would not have missed the wedding for anything in the world. I don't want to lose touch with my, where I, how I was brought up and where I grew up from. You know, that's what they say. It doesn't matter how successful you get, get don't forget where you came from. Uh, Indian weddings mostly go on for a long time, usually at least a week with five or six functions, and it, it means a lot. It's, 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 it's a very excessive, over-the-top affair, so yeah, I look forward to having an Indian, big fat Indian wedding, so uh, it's definitely something I enjoy for sure. One foot in tradition, the other in excess. Tonight, Evan has invited several foreign friends, entrepreneurs and travelers like him. They share photos and videos on social media for Ivan's fans. The young man has hundreds of thousands of followers on Instagram. This part is insane. What I want to say, Evan, thank you that you have invited me to India. It's one of my great best or best experience I had in my life. It was great to have you here, no doubt. Yeah. Always welcome. Always welcome. So we go keep party and take you some drinks and Woohoo! All the way up, guys! <laughs> Man, let's go! Ivan has a taste for parties, luxury, and money. He embodies the brazen success of Indian businessmen who are eager to get rich. In India, they're known as the new Maharajas. Rich, praised by everyone, megalomaniacs. They have nothing to envy of their elders, the old masters of India, even if their style is radically different. Since 2015, India is third in the ranking of the world's billionaires behind the United States and China. Thanks to the country's tremendous economic growth since the 2000s, there are four times more Indian billionaires today than 25 years ago. The whole palace belongs to us. Usually you change my rooms and, uh, whenever I come here. While 400 million Indians live below the poverty line, they bring together tradition and globalization with success and excess. I've been trained for this, that uh, you know, in our Marwadi system, uh, you are trained to, to get into the family business and you expect it to. Gautam Singhania, the descendant of an old family of merchants, reigns over the Indian textile industry. His fortune has multiplied by 10 in 10 years. The champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> the Indian billionaires love expensive toys. For Mrs. Neeta Ambani's birthday, uh, they spent over 200 crore. But in the country of Gandhi and Mother Teresa, these insane expenses sometimes have a dark side, especially since the country's masters are also tax evasion world champions. India's most flamboyant, a willful defaulter. The king of alcohol, Vijay Malya, opted for a golden exile to escape tax and prison. We found him in England. How come that you don't come home for face the justice of your country, for example? Why should I? The revolution is that these masters of India are no longer just heirs. This woman is a symbol of this. Kalpana Sarosh came from the caste of untouchables, a marginalized community that lives in poverty. 
Today, she is the head of a real estate empire in Bombay. I have been working for this company. It's a very big effort. So, I can do this effort. 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 Who are these Indian businessmen and women who can't seem to be stopped? What are their secrets? For months, we investigated the very elite circle of the new Maharajas. Noida in the suburbs of Delhi. Behind these gates, this residential neighborhood belongs to new Indian fortunes with secure grounds and private guards. It is on the terrace of his parents' house that we meet Ivan Lutra, the young rich entrepreneur. Fuck, 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 fuck. I don't know how to get it back. Ivan is very busy with his new toy, a state-of-the-art drone worth 2,000 euros. Fuck. Don't ever fly on the roof. Don't ever fly on the roof. Is it broken or...? I think it may be broken, but you'll have to see when we try to fly it again. It is in this luxury duplex with its breathtaking view of the capital that Ivan lives with his mother and father. His family belong to the Sikh community, a religious minority known for its business acumen. His father, an entrepreneur, made his fortune in the fashion and textile industry, and this young man chose to follow in his footsteps very early on. At the age of 12, he created his first smartphone app. He stopped his studies after high school to continue founding companies. He summarizes his goal in a series of figures. These are goals that I set for myself, that by 21, I would be making a million a month, which I'm pretty close. By 23rd, I want to be at a million a week, and by 25, a million a day. As he aspires to become a billionaire, the busy young man boldly displays his success, as if to bring fortune. Ivan loves everything that shines and sees it as an investment. I, um, I got him. It's, it's, I, I love gold and black. These are two of my colors which I really like. Uh, so I even I got this uh, solid gold iPhone 7 made because I'm always on my phone. I paid 10,000 pounds for this, but when I sell it, it's probably going to sell for a lot more than 10,000 in a couple of years because it's just an asset. Reptile skins are another of his weaknesses, with a touch of gilding, of course. Yeah, it's all Python. It's kind of illegal in India to wear Python and we go to jail for this. <laughs> but I mean, uh, I'm pretty sure nobody really cares and there's a lot of people flooding this rule. In, in the open, so yeah. I mean, this bag is about $8,000, uh, but it's, it's, the thing is, it doesn't lose its value. I could sell this bag again, probably would sell for a lot more, um, especially because my initials on it now. Arrival at the headquarters of the family business, home to the young man's office. The secret to Avon's success is the surge of services for mobile phones and cheap labor. He has a team of computer specialists in the basement of the building all specializing in the creation of mobile apps. This morning, he is focused on improving a new project. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to add a new feature. So we have already got the user login in Google, right? We want to make a profile function for the user where the user can see his own profile and see which is his past bookings. Can you give an estimate of how long it will take to build this out? Uh, around a month. Bottle Pop, his very latest development, targets the golden youth of large capitals. Uh, bottle Pop is for tables and nightclubs. Let's say if somebody wants to go out and, um, with their friends and they want to have a table, VIP table for themselves, get a good service and they, want to, they intend to spend money, this app allows you to book a table with a click of a button. To make more money quicker, Ivan also buys ideas from others. He has bought shares in several dozens of startups, benefiting from some of their profits and watching his money grow. My $90,000 that I invested is worth now over $2 million in that company. So that's how I look at it. And that's, the, that's a 20 extra turn instead of getting like a 0.2 extra turn. He got his entrepreneurial mindset from his father, a fashion entrepreneur. 
He is the one who provided Evan with an initial investment to start him off. This workshop produces clothing for American ready-to-wear brands. At first skeptical, Evan's father is now amazed by his son's lightning trajectory. Yeah, he's doing far better than we can imagine. <laughs> I would say like that. At his age, there are kids, you know, who even don't know what to do. But he, on his own, he knows at least he has an aim in life. This is what I want to do. While the son's success delights his father, his spending is a different matter. Religion and tradition hold an important place in his family, a different generation, different way of doing things. As long as you are in India, show up is not a good thing. Abroad, it's fine because nobody is bothered. Who, you know, in India, you today you buy a big car, next person next door will say, oh, he has bought a big car. Last year, 240 days, he was out of India. So fine, at least 120 days that you are in India, you know, that means you can spend for a couple of hours, you know, following your traditions and all. The mother is, you know, always behind him. You know, at least follow some tradition, like that. Yeah. Traditions will have to wait. The young man is organizing his next trips to Europe and the United States, where he will be able to satisfy his overindulgence. Uh, yes. The Indian novel Rish, love of glitz and glamour, takes after the old masters of the country, the real Maharajas whose wealth was measured by the splendor of their palaces. Today still, they own vast estates in Rajasthan, the kingdom of the great Rajput families. This is one of Rajasthan's most beautiful palaces, which belongs to the Alzizar family. Cousins of the Maharajas of the city of Jaipur, the Alzizars have ruled over these lands for almost three centuries. Now they're trying to preserve their royal lifestyles. जाने पर वापस डाउन हो जाते फिर मुड़ के आते हमारे हुआ फिर लगा देते कुछ नहीं करना है ब्रेकफास्ट ले आओ जाके दिल जस्ट गो क्विकली गेट द ब्रेकफास्ट 32-year-old Abhi Manju, the eldest of the family, always begins his day in the same way with silverware and waiters in uniform, a meal at the foot of his bed with his younger brother. When I, if I go down and have breakfast, then there are everybody, everybody's coming to meet you. There's so much of work happening, and I hate that. I feel your first meal should be in like absolutely silence, and only people you want to be with, so that then you can plan your whole day, what to do and when to do, and how to do it. Abhi Manju's father transformed the palace into a hotel 15 years ago, entrusting its management to his eldest son. Some 50 rooms at 150 euros on average. Abhi Manju studied hotel management in some of the country's biggest palaces. He is very picky. I uh, usually change my rooms and, uh, whenever I come here. Stay in a different room every time I come. I believe in uh, a. There are a lot of advantages to it. When people come to Al Caesar Mahal, they should feel in. Uh, they should live those two days of uh, that life of how I live. You know, so that's the reason. If you see the palace, every room is absolutely different and showcases my life and my style and my uh, passion for whatever I do. The family promises a Maharaja's holiday. But the maintenance of this 17th century palace costs a fortune, especially since this young man wants only the best. So this is the main Darbar hall of the palace. And uh, this is where people used to come and meet my grandfather. And you'll see all of them out there in, in paintings. We've used in about 14,000 pieces of gold leaf to uh, renovate this room back to its glory. And it took me about a year to finish this job. For the gold leaf alone, the family had to part with several tens of thousands of euros. To pay these vast bills and to differentiate themselves from other hotels set up by other aristocrats, Abhimanju came up with a rather wild idea to hold an electro music festival in his palace, a first. This morning, several hundred people are at work. The concerts begin in less than 24 hours in different areas of the palace. This is the console from which magic's gonna happen. Nice, no, this stays the same. Brilliant. 
What are you doing with the... In the... Yeah. I angled the areas down. So the top boxes... In okay, it's box hitting here. Oh, nice. The idea for the festival came to him with the help of a rock and roll star who was also a savvy businessman. We were having a drink together with Babji, me and Mick Jagger, and Babji said that, you know, his father uh, just recently gifted both the sons the main palace of Alcisa. And so, wow. <laughs> so he said, oh, you should do a festival there. Chalendrov. A few hours before the arrival of the first festival goers, Abhimanju goes on an inspection tour in his jeep, just like the ancient princes who visited their lands. The prince asked young artists to decorate the village walls. Beautiful, beautiful. The inauguration must be up to par. 3,000 music fans are expected, mostly young, trendy socialites from the capital who have spent more than 100 euros, a significant sum in India. We pitched in about 700 tents this year. And you have the palace right there. The festival's reputation has reached beyond India's borders. For its third edition, some 40 DJs answered the prince's call, coming from all over the world. These two experimental artists arrive from Luxembourg. The festival is just getting started. We come across some French people in the crowd, dazzled by Abhimanju's hospitality. Et vous connaissez le prince euh, avant? Non, pas du tout. C'est le prince? <laughs> Enchanté, le prince Abhimanju. C'est lui donc le, le propriétaire des lieux. Ouais. C'est magique, hein? le lieu, il a l'air magique. L'endroit, la décoration, en plus c'est le désert autour. C'est complètement ça. C'est magnifique. <laughs> The prince's aim is to get people talking about Alziza. Today, his goal has been achieved. Hey, music gives me an eye, especially when it's playing at my home. After all, Alziza is getting popular. Mahel obviously comes along, but the village is what gets to, needs to get popular. The music-loving prince's next challenge is the organization of a traditional music festival in another of the family's palaces. While the Indian kings were among the largest fortunes in the world at the beginning of the 20th century, they must today make room for fortunes which started from nothing. Descendants of the servant castes or even from untouchables, the lowest caste in Indian society. A fate that calls slumdog millionaire to mind. In this village, 10 hours drive from Bombay, most people live from the land, in endemic poverty. Yet it is here that one of the most incredible cases of social mobility in modern India began. This village saw the birth of Kalpana Saroj, today the head of a real estate empire worth 300 million euros. Her father was a police officer and her family owned no land. This is the house. The only inhabitant of this mud hut is her 85-year-old aunt who doesn't want to leave despite her niece's wealth. मामी बनाती है और खुद अपना खाना खुद बनाती है खुद बनाती है खुद जाके पानी लाती है वो डिपेंड नहीं रहती आज भी उसको अच्छा नहीं लगता कि वो किसी बहू के ऊपर डिपेंड रहे बेटे के ऊपर डिपेंड रहे तो खुद अपना कमाती है खुद अपना खाती है कशी बड़ी है इसना बड़ी है ना लोकल लोकल या ना कमाना है
Her return to the village may bring a crowd, but Kalpana was born with an enormous handicap. She grew up in a community that has always been marginalized, the untouchables. ये जो हम लोगों को ये जो गटर दिख रहा है इसके इस पार जो है ये वही जिसको कुन भी पूरा कहा जाता है ये स्वर्णों का है और ये जो है इस पार जो है ये बुद्धिश लोगों का है In India the untouchables are the lowest in the Hindu social hierarchy a shunned population considered impure and confined to the most unpleasant jobs तो हमारे दादाजी जैसे कि किसी पाटिल के घर में काम कर रहे हैं तो पाटिल के घर में हम भी बच्चे हैं तो हम चले जाते थे ना तो उनको ऐसे बाहर मतलब बिठाया जा रहा था वो चूल्हे तक नहीं जा सकते थे एक उसका यही है वो यहीं बैठेंगे चाय देना है तो कोई ऐसे कप में देंगे जो कप उन्हीं के लिए अलग रखा जाएगा ग्लास होगा पानी देंगे तो वो भी इस तरह से कल्पाना रेगुलरली रिटर्न टू हर विलेज टू ऑर्गेनाइज चैरिटी डेज This morning, she's inaugurating a temporary medical camp, which offers free ophthalmological care and glasses. The nearest hospital is a two-hour walk away from here. Today is a real luxury for the villagers. I have seen a lot of poor people, so what are the problems of poor people? So I need to solve them. Whatever time I get, I need to do it for my society, for my country. Every country is made of a person who does something for their country. I care health examinations and blood donations. Kalpana takes care of everything. A banquet is even served in a tent put up for the occasion. The village takes on a festive air around the nation's child. She even serves the meal herself. तो उसमें आम है वो रख देने का या अंडे होते थे वो रख देने का तो हम लोग सब चुरा के खा लेते थे। करना शुरू करना। Kalpana Sarosh's story is one of a young girl who rebels against a destiny which was written for her. Married at the age of 12, she went to live in a slum and suffered violence from her in-laws. Her father got her a divorce, but her return to the village was difficult. तो यहाँ आने के बाद में भी लोगों को क्योंकि लड़कियों का यूँ आना लोगों को बर्दाश्त नहीं होता है आज भी नहीं होता तो 50 साल पहले तो सवाल ही नहीं उठता था है ना तो 40 साल पहले समझो तो लोग जो है वो तरह तरह की बातें करना या तरह तरह का टाउंट करना तो जिसकी वजह से मुझे पॉइजन पीना पड़ा तब फिर हमने सोचा कि नहीं चलो ठीक है हम कुछ करके दिखाएंगे कि दुनिया को और हमने अपना सफ़र शुरू कर दिया तो काफ़ी स्ट्रगल इस तब से शुरू हो गया At the age of 16, Kalpana decided to leave for Bombay, with some savings in her pocket and her only talents as a seamstress. Working in a garment factory, she patiently saved a small sum. She used it to buy a metal plant and invest in real estate. Her first move was to buy a piece of land in the north of the city. She resold it at a premium price, taking advantage of soaring prices. मैं न्यू प्रमोटर बोलकर मैं वहाँ गई मैं महिला हूँ मैं दलित हूँ ये एक हिस्ट्री है कि क्योंकि दलित को तो पहले से ही दबा कुचला कुछ ये कर दिया गया उसके बावजूद मैंने जो संघर्ष किया इसके इस कंपनी को हासिल करने के लिए वो बहुत बड़ा संघर्ष है तो इस संघर्ष को मैं कर पाई वो इसको मैं हासिल कर पाई ये भी अपने आप में एक हिस्ट्री है Kalpana, whose audacity and courage have overcome prejudice and exclusion. This is also one of India's secrets, a country where everything's possible. Although today she is the head of DBTP, a powerful real estate and construction materials group, Kalpana is against flashing wealth, which she finds indecent given how she grew up. It's from this modest office in the center of Bombay that she continues her investments.
तर ते सगळं ढाचा तिथे तयार करतील आणि हे आतमध्ये जे आहे तर वन फिफ्टी रूम ना मीन्स फाईव्ह स्टार नाही करता येणार कारण फाईव्ह स्टार करायला गेलं तर तेवढी जागा आपल्याकडे तशी नाही आहे एक गोष्ट तीस करोड रुपये आपण त्यांना द्यायचे म्हणजे हे सगळं ते आपल्याला तयार करून देतील ओके आपलं जे हे हेरिटेजचं आहे ना Kalpana works with her daughter Seema, who graduated from a London university. The 30-year-old has decided to follow in her mother's footsteps. Apart from business centers, we have a start-up cafe. We have a lot of ideas for the people who have a lot of coffee. We have a lot of ideas for business ideas. We have a lot of ideas for business ideas. Seema Saraj's project is the development of this building in downtown Bombay. It's part of her mother's real estate. The property's value is 120 million euros. I think we have a plus point in our building that we can able to see the documents there. The BT station that side, we have Taj the other round. So I think it's amazing. I think people will love to sit here and, you know, enjoy the evenings. At the age of 30, Seema's career as a businesswoman has already been laid out. But unlike billionaire heirs, Seema knows the sacrifices her mother had to make to get there. I think she never, uh, me and my brother, she never informed what is she facing or uh, what is she going through. She always shown us the happy, happy, loving mother. Never informed what all she has faced to achieve this. And today, when uh, people like you come and take the interview, from her interview we came to learn that how difficult it was for her to achieve all this. Despite the multi-million dollar projects that they manage, the Saraj family has not locked itself away in a bubble of luxury. No grand apartments in chic neighborhoods. The family live in this building in the northern suburb of the city. On Sundays, Kalpana entertains at her home in complete simplicity. Her door stays open all day for family and neighbors, but also for the poor who come to ask for her help. This couple come from her village. They have just traveled 15 hours by bus to inform her of the marriages of their two daughters. तर ते तुमच्या लग्नासाठी जे पोरीच्या लग्नासाठी पाहिजे तर हे पन्नास हजार रुपये आहे ठीक आहे ठीक आहे आणि पायापडा घ्या आणि पायापडा बस म्हणजे झाला विषय संपला ठीक आहे सुखी फिफ्टी थाउजंड रुपीज ऑन नियरली सेव्हन हंड्रेड युरोज फॉर दिस फॅमिली ऑफ फार्मर्स इट्स दी अक्विवलंट ऑफ अ इयर्स इन्कम हा बस ओ अभि वो रो राय खुशी के आंसू आप क्या करेंगे इसके साथ आपके बेटी के लिए शादी करेंगे जाने के बाद शादी करेंगे करना पड़ेगा मंडप वगैरह वगैरह ना वगैरह कल पर हमारे भगवान ही हैं हम भगवान ही मानते हैं हमारे 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 � because of her origins, Kalpana Saraj, the philanthropist, is an exception in the world of the Indian novel riche. She has not yet reached the level of the highest fortunes, which are worth billions. Among these new tycoons, everything is about excess, and it's all part of the show. White sandy beaches lined with coconut trees. Goa, on India's west coast, is a playground for billionaires who want to escape the big cities for the weekend. But however beautiful it may be, when you are called Singania, the beach is too small. It's a weekend with my school friends. Um, we do this once a year when you know, all the friends who live abroad all come down. Gautam Singania is one of the most famous billionaires in India. He manages the country's largest clothing brands. At the age of 50, the textiles king's fortune is estimated at $1.5 billion. When he goes away for the weekend, it's on his yacht, Ashina, a 50-meter-long three-story floating palace built entirely out of precious wood. He sails this luxury across the seas as and when he desires, from the Indian Ocean to the Mediterranean. Actually, I enjoy taking the boat to the Maldives. Uh, Maldives is beautiful. 
uh, but we haven't been in a long time, but we'll probably get there soon. The South of France season is in July, August, um, which is the best time and uh, you know, obviously we can't come to Goa at that time of the year because uh, of the monsoon. India's season is not there, so you know, you got to do a little bit of everything. It's only 11 a.m., but the party has already started. The weekend always begins with the chef's cocktail. He's in a good mood. He's put less water. Who's? I'm in a good mood. I'm always in a good mood. See, you're bloody very. No, 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 no. You're bloody very big, babe. I'm not going to waste so much water on the water. Don't make it too strong. It's not too strong. Yes, ice is too much. Relax, man. For these old school friends, the weekend in Goa is a reunion not to be missed. The breakfast especially. The menu includes truffle omelette, caviar, Japanese chocolates and fine vintage wines. The champagne wishes and caviar dreams. <laughs> 40 years in the making. Right, Gautam? About 40 years in the making, 42 years. Something like that, roughly. Long years. Long years. Yeah. Gautama organized this trip himself and brought in goods from London by plane. This weekend, he opens the doors to his billionaire lifestyle to his closest friends. Does Gautam like luxury? No. He likes super luxury. In what sense? Uh, he's achieved what he has, so he obviously wants the best, best available wherever. Whether it's Bombay, Goa, yes, he loves luxury. It's not easy to lead this lifestyle. It's easy to say, I wish I had a yacht or I wish I had an aircraft. But I know a lot of the millionaires and billionaires. I don't know many who do what he does. By the end of the morning, the group of 50-somethings have already fallen back into adolescence. It is only the size and the style of the toys that has changed. Goa has become the stomping ground of India's billionaires, and that's because it is right next to their city, Bombay. The mega city, with a population of over 20 million, accounts for more than half of the country's super rich. Their latest whim is to have towers built in the heart of the city. Some have been estimated at more than a billion euros. These 37 stories, which dominate the seafront, are Guatama Singhania's future residence. The only part of the tower that has been built at the moment are these two levels, dedicated to the family business, textiles, and their famous brand, Raymond. This company is a beast of 70 million euros of annual turnover, 60% of market shares, and 3,000 shops across the country. Today, the group's big boss inspects his brand's flagship. How are your sales doing? Doing great, sir. So we've done around 2 crore 11 lakh rupees. Yesterday, we finished our target. For November? Yes, we've achieved 100% sales. Now, how are your fabric sales going? Amazingly well. We've uh, had a growth of around 4 to 5% over last year. And new shirtings? How are the new shirtings? They've done really good and it's sold out within two to three days. Really? It's the printed oh. shirt especially, yes. That's very good. The Raymond brand was launched by Gautama's family at the beginning of the 20th century. It was losing momentum when he took his father's place in the CEO's chair in 2000. The acclaimed company was in need for a dusting off, a diversification. Thanks to Gotama, today Raymond is high-end and has increased in value. So this would be about uh, 3 lakh rupees a meter. Uh, so Sutland would be about 14,000 euros for just the fabric for a suit and then the stitching, etc. Raymond is a brand, you know, it really sells from 250 rupees a meter to 300,000 rupees a meter across the range. And we say, you know, from the taxi wala to Mr. Tata, everybody wears the Raymond, Raymond brand. In his stores, the Indian textile boss wears a suit and tie. But outside work, he prefers sportswear. And that's because a day in the life of Gautama Singhania is a sprint from start to finish. And to get around Bombay, the quickest possible way, he takes his helicopter, the best way to avoid the traffic. In the north of the city, the company's headquarters, a true American-style campus for the 1,500 employees who work there, between royal palm trees 
and impeccable lawns. Here, the Singanias have reigned supreme since they bought the old wool factory in the 20th century. So when the boss arrives to prepare a new collection, tension rises a notch. To give the presentation to our CMD is very difficult because he's the person who is always looking for new developments and he has got the brilliant test of the fabric. Looking at the fabrics, he will be able to tell you whether the fabric is from 180s or 200s, or it's from Vaikona or the Pashmina or the Kashmir. Uh, the boss arrives. His team has 30 minutes to convince and surprise him. And this is what you are offering, this is what you are We are also not looking for only one category. Techno Spark can be one feature, and we can develop many product categories under this. Oh, next development in TechnoSmart. TechnoSmart next. Let me tell you what I do. Higher synthetic than wool, wool, wool. Yes, sir. Wool. Yes, sir. Thoda. Thoda. Absolutely. Sir, absolutely. Right. 25, 30 percent. Thoda. The Indian textile prince is now at the heart of the family business. It is these woolen fibers that his family has worked on for a century that made him king. Like any good sovereign, Gautama Singhania has his court and his protocol. This is the antechamber of power. Behind this door, the throne room has all the glory of this billionaire and his family. I'd rather put up memories or pictures on my walls than uh, put up, uh, you know, paintings, which have no meaning to me. The Singhanias are an old family from the Rajasthan province. They are part of the Mawari community, merchants among the richest in the country. When you were growing up, did you always have this image in your head that you were one day going to be taking over this company? Were you groomed for this role? Yeah, I think from childhood uh, you've been trained for this, that uh, you know, in our Mawari system uh, you are trained to, to get into the family business and you're expected to do that. So whether it was dinner conversations or weekend conversations, it was you know, a lot of conversations revolve around business, so you sort of learnt that way. I'm already saying we all come from Rajasthan, from a small part called Shekhavat, and therefore we're called Shekhavati Marwadis. And, and for some strange reason, the Shekhavati Marwadis have all gone out and become big businessmen. A flat for business which seems alive in the Singhania family. My elder daughter is very, very keen on running the business. She's been coming here since the age of five, trying to attend meetings. She walks around the office and asks around and oh, you're very inquisitive, so it's good, but let's see, she's very young. A woman at the head of the group would be an earthquake in this world of men attached to their history and their traditions. For the Mawaris, it is family and community that take precedence. At the end of the CEO's day, Gautama Singhania likes to relax without slowing down the pace. He built his own race circuit on his company's campus. Total cost of the cars and the track, nearly 250,000 euros. This discipline that he wants to launch in India is called the drift. It is the art of controlled skidding and engines that roar. We want to promote the sport, so we just do this maybe two or three times a year where we tell people come and drift, you know. And, and it's not a category-wise or anything of that sort. It's just, you know, bring whatever you got. And people have this enthusiasm to, to take out some adrenaline, and so they come and do it on the track. Are you the godfather of drift in India? <laughs> I don't say godfather, but I'm probably the only drifter from India. Far from high-end textiles and suit jackets, it is here that this speed demon gets his adrenaline rush. This taste for danger fascinates the Indian media, who are accustomed to the billionaire's escapades. He's the only person who, in India who has passion for speed and who can afford this passion, and he has four drifting cars and then Ferraris, Lamborghinis, the best of the cars. Two years ago, Gautama Singhania decided to treat himself to the thrill of a true automobile competition. 
Indeed we do, as they're up to the timing line. Gautam Singhania has converted that pole position into P1 and will deny Jacques Diver. Singhania with a perfect start, and Eric Prinot has got ahead of Diver. Despite his responsibilities, he has taken the time to travel the world to live out his dream and fly the colors of the Indian flag. We will head now to take the checkered flag. Singhania wins from Prinot. P2. The entrance ticket to this Sunday sport event costs a million euros. At that price, the souvenir video looks like the trailer for an action film. For his first year, the novice finished fourth worldwide. This evening, he celebrates his season at this chic club in the center of Bombay, where the owner himself remembers the scale of his exploits. I said that, I have to tell you, it's probably one of the most competitive forms of motorsport I have ever seen. It's infinitely more competitive than Formula One. No more turnovers or associates. Gautama Singhania, the racer, celebrates in style with a crown of admirers. Ultra-ambitious megalomaniacs, the Maharajas of today, see themselves as the heroes of modern India. But in the country of Gandhi, where 40 million children still suffer from malnutrition, some of these new Maharajas manage to avoid paying taxes. India ranks number one in the world for tax evasion. More than 500 billion euros are allegedly hidden abroad. India's most flamboyant, a willful defaulter. How does a business baron who owes banks thousands of crores of rupees get to leave the country? Now his passport has been revoked by the government. The icon of these tax evaders is Vijay Malya, the boss of Kingfisher Beverages, nicknamed the Indian Richard Branson. He is a fan of luxury and beautiful women, and now he's on the run. After having made his fortune in the alcohol business, the party king wanted his own planes. He launched an upscale airline as the Indian skies were already overloaded. The rise in oil prices ended up sinking his dream and deepening his debt. All of Vijay Malya's Indian property was supposed to be put up for auction to pay his creditors. Villas, planes, cars. But several months after the billionaire's flight, his collectible cars still shine behind the windows of this building in New Delhi, like a mockery to the tax office. Using hidden cameras, we discover Dr. Malia's secret garage. Nice to meet you. Thank you. Pleasure. Forty gleaming luxury cars make up this great collector's a small museum. You wouldn't drive those cars, yeah, Dr. Malia. No, he doesn't. No? You would have what? A driver and a... Oh, he is lifted to us. How was, much do what you think would this whole cost? Here itself would be about... I think between 50... 50 crores. 50 crores. Yes. The mechanic tells us that there is another bigger warehouse in the south of the city. And no hint of a seizure to pay back his debts. No one came for for eventually uh, to visit, to see them, to buy? We no? don't allow anyone. But it belongs to Dr. Malia or to the company? Well, the company is his own. The company belongs to Dr. Malia. Yeah. At the end of the day, it is his. Yeah, that's his, that's still his toys. <laughs> he left these jewels behind when he took the road to exile, or rather, to his golden retirement. We went to find him. We traced him back to France to the Côte d'Azur. Just off Cannes, he's the owner of one of the most beautiful residences in the region, on Ile Sainte Marguerite, also one of the most expensive. His villa and its huge garden is estimated between 30 and 40 million euros. For the island's inhabitants, the extravagant high roller is a normal resident, but not an ordinary one. He has managed to get himself a few privileges. Il se déplace comment dans l'île En voiture. En voiture ou, ou camionnette. Mais c'est une île piétonne, non Il n'y a pas de véhicule Oui, mais c'est le seul qui est autorisé. On sait qu'il a deux gros bateaux dans le coin aussi. A priori, il aurait un bel appartement à Monaco. Je pense que tout va bien pour lui, à ce côté-là. While this huge garden is his haven of peace, Monaco is his stomping ground. 
parties that he organises during the Formula One Grand Prix have remained in everyone's memories, like this one three years ago. Because Vijay Malia loves a party in all its excess. Clément de Souza was his private DJ for 20 years. These parties he lived from the inside. I play for his parties in Monaco uh, during the F1. So that's when we are like we're on the yacht. He's got a huge 100-foot yacht. He's flown me uh, a couple of times uh, in the past in his private jet because he decides sometimes last minute, you know, like I want to have a party. And he actually has a full-fledged uh, nightclub inside his villa in Goa. I played for his 50th birthday, which was a huge celebration in Goa. Like, Enrique Iglesias, Lionel Richie all flew down to wish him and stuff like that. Four days of non-stop events. This party lifestyle stopped one year ago when the high roller fell with a crash. When he left India, he sought refuge in London. So he went there. BJ Malia has been a British resident for more than 20 years. He was attracted to England and its tax system. Today, he takes advantage of its discretion. Our request for an interview went unanswered. The billionaire hides away behind the walls of his manor in North London. But we finally caught sight of him last March when the Formula One season started again. Vijay Malia's little indulgence. He couldn't resist the urge to show up with his new car in front of cameras from all over the world. The exiled billionaire only comes out of his silence to talk about his favorite sport, his passion. The strategy is clear. Mr. Malia has done nothing wrong. I do not owe one euro personally to any bank. Kingfisher Airlines Limited unfortunately closed down the business and they try to hold me personally responsible. You come home for face the justice of your country, for example. Why should I? I First know. of all, there has to be a proper legal charge against me, which there isn't. All right? VJ Malia lies without a hint of remorse. A judicial procedure for non-payment was launched over a year ago. And a few days after filming, the king of the alcohol business was arrested by Scotland Yard for several hours. He awaits extradition to India. But the fall of Vijay Malia does not frighten the Indian novel Rish. Ivan Lutra, the young millionaire, sees himself high in the rankings of India's largest fortunes, those in the billions. It is in London that we also find him, in a bling bling gold 4x4, marketing his new application bottle pop. London is the best market for bottle pop, you know? There's just too many people spending too much disposable income on bottles that they don't remember the next day, including myself. You go out and people will obviously be uh, buying more and more champagne bottles with the sparklers, because they do it, the girls come to the tables and that's what they want, they want to be able to show off. It's, it's a shallow society, it's always a competition because everybody can see everybody, but the app makes a commission whatever our clients spend, so that's how we make money. With Bottle Pop, Ivan can earn nearly 20,000 euros commission for each soiree. This money, which flows freely in London, the European finance capital, is what attracts more and more Indian fortunes here. Hey, Siva. What's up, man? How are you? Good, good, good. Man, Indian businessmen have taken over London like crazy, you know. Lakshmi Mittal, he's one of the biggest uh, residences and areas from India. Tata is an Indian businessman. He's the largest private employer in all of the UK. An Indian company is the biggest private employer. Nice Ivan spends a lot of time in London, also to find new business ideas, no matter where. Tonight, he has a meeting at a fairground with Stan, a young French 17-year-old. He is looking for funding for his project, a virtual reality headset for medical students. It teaches them how to operate in almost real conditions. So if I'm wearing the headset, exactly. what am I seeing? I'm seeing a body next to me. You're seeing a body next to you. And it's a doctor who's operating on the body. And doing it, and like you would see it, and you look at the experience, and through looking, you learn. you got to have a number in your mind. You've got to know how much gonna, money you need. We're not going to say a huge amount because... 80k to start really well. 80k pounds? Yeah. And where does the 80k pounds go? 80k pounds goes in salary. For the young Frenchman, this meeting is very important for the funding of his project. 
On sait très bien qu'il qu s'est quand même bien débrouillé, il a 20 ans, il a quand même déjà beaucoup d'argent, il est déjà très connu sur les réseaux sociaux, on peut voir ça, etc. Evan is seduced by the idea. He suggests they meet again quickly. Yeah. Me, I have some friends in London. We have a fund that's just investing in VR companies. Yeah. That's why I actually had the meeting with you. Uh, we're looking for deals all the time. So if you can send me a pitch deck, it doesn't matter where you meet them. It's matter what's in the brains. <laughs> you could meet me in a fucking toilet, but if you make me a million dollars, I'll sign up right now. <laughs> a few weeks later, Ivan will invest 580,000 euros in the young Frenchman's startup. The millionaire does not merely want to reign supreme in India, but to count, to be known and to be recognized around the world. And for that, he multiplies his trips, but also his parties, an essential component of his image. 24 hours later, we find him in Berlin, in a luxury car, in direction to the most chic area of the German capital. This evening, Ivan has a meeting in a presidential suite, which costs 2,700 euros a night, with other millionaires under the age of 25 like him, exclusively men. Chinese, Germans, Russians or Indians, they are all part of the rich kids of Instagram, the world's golden youth who display themselves on social media. This group is the creme de la creme of the spoiled children of the internet. Ah. Trash videos, nefarious photos, these uninhibited nouveau riche kids like to take center stage online. They have more money than you, and this is what they do, is their welcome message on Instagram. You can see their VIP trips, their passion for parties, luxury and excess of all kinds. Ivan Rutra is one of the most active rich kids on social media. In just a few years, he has become one of the stars of the group, with uninhibited and materialistic discourse bordering crudeness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So we have to cheer. Cheers. I'm your host tonight. We do have a lot of fun. Yes. All the best, Evan. Great. Cheers. I, I, I always say work smart, play hard. I never say to work hard. It's always about doing the right thing. Like, you know, people, a lot of people, like, they do a lot of hard work, labor, but they don't achieve anything in life. A lot of people can make one phone call and, like, get a million bucks in the bank. If you want to spend money like we do, you can't be stupid. Stupid people don't make money. Stupid people are broke. So if people have money, they're probably smart. Tonight, Ivan's objective is to flash his cash on social media and to broaden his community of fans. I mean, I have like 200,000 followers, they want to see. You know, so it's gonna, gonna give them good content. No, you have to taste. Cheers. Cheers to everybody. The meal sprinkled with champagne is quickly wolfed down because it is in this hip nightclub that the party goers will give it their all. Yeah. Indian club gold. All Indians love gold. That's how it is. If you see an Indian, they must have gold like this. Jewelry, champagne and girls. Tonight, the apprentice billionaires will lift all the cliches to feed their Instagram accounts. Put in your mouth. Put in your mouth. The cost of the soiree will remain confidential, but the young high rollers spend sometimes up to 100,000 euros per night. If you, are, if you show success, that gets you more success. Thanks to contacts wrapped up in a box or elsewhere, Ivan Lutra has invested in more than 40 businesses all over the world. These new Indian Maharajas are only at the beginning of their reigns. Next year, some 20 new billionaires are expected to boost India's place in the rankings of the world's biggest fortunes.